Hi, this is a very uh, quick tutorial to show you how to run Python program from the command line. Um, I have a very short program and um, I'll go very quickly through it. All it does, it reads uh, lines of text from the keyboard, so the input um, function is used here. An uppercase version of the input is stored in line and then um, we look for a sentinel. If the sentinel, which is the end, is found uh, in a line, the program will stop, the loop will stop. Otherwise, we see if we find either key one or key two, which are the words mother and father. And if we do, then we increment counter. So there's a counter for key one and there's a counter for key two. So at the end, we'll know how many times we've seen the word mother, how many times we've seen the word father. Okay, and we print that outside. So um, what I want to do is that I've, um, I've already created, it's it's saved. Its name is count keyword py, okay, which is also seen here. So that's the name of the program. So I'm going to run it, but not from idle. I'm going to run it from the uh, command line. So this is an old version of Windows, but it will work the same in Windows 7 and more recent versions. Um, what I want to run is actually right here, but if I didn't have this icon here, I could find it by typing command here and it finds it command prompt click on it wait a little bit and here I have my um, command prompt which is also called a console so I need to go to the desktop here all right and my program count keywords.py is right here I see it here so I can run it so to run it, I need to call the interpreter. So I need to figure out where it is on my disk. And I've done a little bit of searching, and I found out that it was in backslash python32. And the name of the interpreter is just python.exec. So it's a Windows program, .exec. You will recognize as an application on the Windows. And so that's how I would actually run the Python interpreter. If I wanted to run my program, I just type the name of my program press enter and now we see the cursor is right here and it's waiting for my input it's not displaying anything because my input statement which is right here doesn't print anything all right we'll see why later um, so I can enter some random characters and then some more and then I'm gonna put the word mother maybe mother again and then I'm gonna put one father keyword Okay, and then my sentinel, it's the end, and that's it. So the, the program we see stops as soon as it finds the sentinel, the loop stops, and then it tells me how many times it has found a mother or father. And actually here it says one, it only, if mother appears twice in one line, it will count it as only one. So um, maybe a bug, but here maybe all I want is the number of lines in which mother and, and, and father appear. So that's what it's reporting to, um, to me. All right, now let's do something a little bit more interesting. If I want to actually figure out how often these keywords appear in, say, the poems of Emily Dickinson, then what I'm going to do is go to the Gutenberg.org website and search for Emily Dickinson. And they just happen to have the text version of a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of her poems. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, select all of this. So let's see, giving me this. OK, Control A. I've selected everything. Right click, copy. All right. So now, so this is the trick that I wanted to, uh, to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say copy the console, con colon, to a file. Dickinson text, enter. And now whatever I type at the keyboard will go in this file. And um, But here, since I have copied everything in the buffer, I can say paste. So basically, everything that was in my browser window, I can paste. And I will see it go by very quickly. A lot of characters here, a lot of poems. So they're going, going directly into that file. So copying the console into that file puts it all there, here. All I have to do is to add the sentinel at the end. And now I can I have to, to type a special character to indicate to the copy command that that's the end, the end of my input. And that's Control Z. All right, so now if I look 
and ask the um, command to list all the files by date, and we'll see that dickinson.txt, which I've just created, contains about 200 kilobytes, uh, 200,000 characters, and these are the poems from Emily Dickinson. So now here's the trick. I can ask my Python program to actually get its input from this file instead of the keyboard by doing this. I'm going to bring back... Oops, I have a lot of stuff here. I have to retype my command. Uh, Python 3.2, Python exec, that's the interpreter. Um, count keywords.py, that's the name of my program. And then I'm going to use the less than character. Say get your input from, not the keyboard, but the dickinson.txt file. And if I do that and press enter, so now my program very quickly is going to get all the lines from dickinson.txt. And it will say that it has found mother, the word mother on two lines and father on 18 lines. So now we see a little, little bit of information about, um, about this. So that's a little, um, a little trick that could be useful, is that with very little Python, you can actually process a lot of files without, without having to learn how to deal with files uh, in Python, even though it's pretty simple. Um, all right. Um, this should be another video that will show you how to do the same thing on a Mac.